what role can play aquaponics in the future of food production. This is what we're going to see together in this video. So if you follow my channel for a while, you know that aquaponics is a really cool way to produce some food. We can all produce a bit of food in our backyard. But the question is, how is it going to change our future uh, and our relation with uh, food production in a bigger scale in the world, around the world? Uh, nowadays, a lot of people see aquaponics, uh, see the potential of aquaponics and uh, imagine big productions, big factories, big farms where you use uh, some uh, fish and produce some plants uh, in a big, big, big closed greenhouse, uh, big density, and you can export this production all around the world, same as what is done currently in uh, the classic agriculture system. My view is slightly different. I think to really understand uh, what role can play aquaponics in the big food production, we need to understand what is happening currently uh, on the planet. How, what, where does the food that we eat come from? Most of the time, the food that we eat is coming from monoculture farms. When I say monoculture, I'm talking about farms that are growing only one crop. For example, if you buy corn from the supermarket or most of the, of the plants that you can buy, in the corn field, you, co you got only corn that is growing. Everything around it is dead. Is If any plant tries to grow, the farmers are spraying pesticides to try to kill uh, those, uh, those other uh, plants that are growing, those other herbs. Uh, the life around uh, in the soil is dead as well because the, the farmers are using pesticides. Uh, obviously, there are less and less insects on the crop. And that's, for me, that's the problem of monoculture, is where basically we try to grow only one species in very high density on one surface. And nature is not designed to grow only one species. Nature is based on ecosystems. So when you try to grow one species, you have to basically kill all the other species. And when you kill all the other species, you don't have the beneficial cycle, which means that the soil is becoming poor in terms of nutrients. And you have to basically give some fertilizer to your plants. So everything is artificial. You basically just use the soil as a media. It is not good uh, from uh, obviously a biodiversity uh, perspective. There is no biodiversity in the soil. This biodiversity disappears, so you don't see as many insects, you don't see as many butterflies, birds, and it's everything, right? The whole natural ecosystem is broken due to those big lands that are turned in monoculture. Also, it produces a huge quantity of food, but you need a lot of pesticides, so it's very costly. Uh, it consumes also a lot of resources in terms of uh, gas, you know, to turn for the machine, for the tractor, for all those type of things. And also, the problem is all the food is produced in one place at big density. So then you need to transport this food to the consumer. Most of the time, the consumer is can be on the other side of the planet. And that's not an issue. As long as the, the, the consumer, the price work, it can be, you can produce some food in Chile and consume it in Australia. You can produce some food in Asia and consume it in the US. Uh, it's, it's very stupid. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but that's the way it is right now. And my vision of, uh, uh, of the future of uh, food production, actually the ideal future for me, will be to, to stop to produce as much in one place, but to try to produce a bit less, but a bit more everywhere. So basically, eating local food, that would be basically the, the solution, because you don't have the transport that is basically killing the planet. It's, it's a massive, it has a massive impact uh, on obviously the pollution, um, and now we can see the climate change and all those type of things. That it's extremely scary. Uh, but if you produce the food locally, uh, you basically stop those transport and at least you, you have a better um, relationship with the food because it's not coming from the other side of the world. You are able to maybe access to the production site, talk with the farmer 
and uh, it's it's completely different. Then you start to trust the food because nowadays the problem we have is that we don't trust the food anymore. Anyway, to come back to aquaponics, why I think um, aquaponics will be, will be really well adapted to this type of system that I'm, I'm describing is that in aquaponics it's very uh, simple to produce small uh, quantity of food with a lot of biodiversity but as soon as you scale up, you scale up, you scale up if you start to go in a type of monoculture where you have a lot of the same species of plants in one greenhouse if you have a pest that goes inside this greenhouse or even if uh, in a field if you have the pests that come and if you have only one or two types of crop uh, the pests are going to grow very quickly and as we are working with uh, a whole ecosystem and bacteria and fish we can't use chemicals to kill the pests because otherwise it would affect the bacteria and, and, the, and the fish and that's why um, I say sometimes uh, aquaponics is better than organic because here we don't use any chemicals at all but the problem is uh, we really rely on the natural mechanism, the natural balance that is happening in any envi natural environment where you always got, uh, when you got a, an insect that is coming and starting to eat the plants, you got a predator that is there to manage the population of this, uh, of this insect. So that's how we work in aquaponics and in permaculture. We don't want to use any pesticide, we want to just work with what is nature doing by itself, just biodiversity, that's just the magic of aquaponics. So um, in small scale it works extremely well. As soon as you go in big scale and if you don't have the good biodiversity it becomes very hard to manage. Um, that's why uh, a lot of people want to start aquaponics and go for commercial and it's totally possible but it has some challenges that we need to keep in mind. You first need to be able to manage a small aquaponic system and to see what type of uh, challenges you can have on a small scale and then you can go for a bigger scale produce a bit more but I think the, the ideal for me would be to to have a lot of people who start to produce aquaponics food in a medium scale where they can produce for themselves and for the close family and the local community but not going for big multinational that grow like one big farm there and export the production all around the world. Otherwise we fall in the same problem. And I think the solution of the society is to produce the food where it is consumed. That's really the secret, right? Uh, and aquaponics for that is going really well because it allows you to produce food at high density in very small uh, surface area. So we can all start to produce a bit of food in the cities. And that's just fantastic. If we all do that, then the day when something happens, imagine today in a big city, if you have the transport that stops, if for some reason the price of, uh, uh, of the transport is too expensive or whatever, like if something happens, if you can't bring the food from those big farms to the city, all people in the city are going to starve very, very quickly. In one or two weeks, everyone is going to start to be starving because there is no there is no food production in the cities and you got millions of people. And that's the problem we are facing nowadays. None of our cities are sustainable. But if we start to produce some food with aquaponics, we can, we can with a soft transition, start to make those, those uh, cities more sustainable. More and more, slowly, slowly, we can all start to produce a bit of food. And in the future, we can also grow food uh, on the uh, roof of the, uh, of the buildings. There are plenty of area even in the backyard, instead of having a lawn that is sometimes useless, sorry to say that, but the lawn have also a big impact on the environment when you try to maintain a lawn. It's not producing anything, you could produce some food there. So I'm not saying that lawn are bad, right? It's good to have lawn to, to relax, to play a bit, but it has a, a cost, right? On the environment and, and uh, an economical cost as well. And you can use those land to produce more food. So basically, that's where I see aqua the future of aquaponics and um, the role that aquaponics could play in the future of food production. Also, for me, one of the key is to have one aquaponic system surrounded by classic gardens and you use uh, obviously the water of the aquaponic system when you have a peak of nitrates to water your plants. It's going to be a free fertilizer, it's going to be a reserve of water and also you can grow in aquaponics some plants that are demanding more water, more moisture, because in aquaponics we don't lose the resources, everything is remaining in the system. 
you got a bit of evaporation, but you can't compare it with a garden. You use probably 10 times less water in an aquaponic system than in a classic garden. So the idea is to have an aquaponic system and around it you got classic gardens and the plants that can accept uh, dry, uh, dry period, you put them in the classic garden and the plants that need more water, you put them in the aquaponic system. And that's really a good mix, a good way to see uh, a good food production in the future. So if you want to start aquaponics, uh, the best way to do it is to get the free aquaponics training for the description of the video just below. Uh, it's a free guide to help you uh, to get the critical uh, limits of aquaponics and the critical information to build your aquaponic system but also to manage it in the best conditions. Uh, so again, it's free from the description of the video just below or in the I like information on the corner of the video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. I'm going to give you one free video every week. See you in the next one. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop!